Okay, so in the From TV show, there are three big questions. Actually, I've got like a, a million questions. Most of them are just uh, probably going to be answered when the plot unfolds in the next couple of episodes. Now, here's um, the thing. These questions that I'm about to ask in this video, I kind of brainstormed about them for hours, right? Days at this point. So I may be able to give you those answers, right? Uh, please subscribe here to me on YouTube. And also, slap a like on this video. Like goal is going to be 420. <laughs> Get it? Weed. <laughs> Alright, so the first question. This is everybody's question. How do you kill one of these monsters? Or better yet, why hasn't the citizens of Frumville tried to kill one of these creatures? Well, to put it short, they are regular ass people. <laughs> Until some military folks got sucked into the hell dimension that is Frumville... Right? They haven't been able to militarize and survive, right? It was thanks to the main character, Boyd Steven, in his army ranging experience. I think he's an army ranger. I know he's in the army, but I don't know if he's a ranger or not. But it was thanks to him and his military tactics that they were able to just survive, right? Like, he luckily found the uh, talismans, but he wouldn't have found the talismans if he wasn't trying to search the woods for uncharted territory, right? So, that's the case. Um, I feel like that's the main reason why they haven't tried to kill one of these creatures yet. The idea hasn't came to them. They're just trying to survive still right now. Like, they just recently got those talismans. They just recently started to live and survive, right? So, that's the main reason why they haven't tried to kill one of these creatures. They are not military folks. Just the sheriff is. Okay, but eventually, they will probably try to do it. So, that brings up the next question. Or, I guess this is kind of tied into the first one. How do you kill one of these monsters? Right? The obvious, most obvious way, in my opinion, is daylight, right? They avoid it at all costs, meaning they only come out when it's dark, and we see they sleep underground to avoid daylight. So, in my opinion, the best way or the one of the close to confirmed ways to kill these creatures is sunlight. So, if they can somehow, and I'm sure everybody who's watched this show thought of this after a few episodes in, most of the things I say in this video, most of the things you hear repeated online are Probably things that you, the viewer, thought of yourself while watching it, right? There's no, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's no books to this story. So there's not like a bunch of sleuthing that you could do to try to come up with theories. You kind of, we get what we're given. So I, what I try to do in my videos at least is try to say original things that I feel like only I could think of because, well, there's only one me, right? But anyway, uh, daylight, right? trap the creatures in something dig a hole right dig a hole there's already technically a hole that's being dug right it collapsed uh <laughs> jim's house jim and tabitha's house but there's the hole still there they could clear all the debris away and somehow maybe get a tape recorder and play the voice of someone who's trapped down there and then they get a creature down there and they run up behind it and bum rush it but here's the thing we don't know uh, if they can fly, right? Remember when, <laughs> when they were having the party at the communion house last season and the dude who wanted to have sex with the ghost let her in? Remember, those people, the other demons that after she kills the dude and lets them in and she opens up the window, those demons are on the ground and they come in through the roof. So it makes you wonder, can they jump really high? Can they fly? Will digging a hole even do anything to try to kill them with daylight? Probably not. So here's some other ways. Uh, I think this is an obvious choice. Take a talisman, right, which repels them, and shove it inside their body. Figure out some sort of way to shove it down their throat. Maybe they could shoot a, shoot them with bullet holes. The problem is, is these creatures are super strong, super fast, and are seemingly immortal, right? But you could find some way to use a projectile to fire the talisman into one of these creatures. <laughs> that was really stupid. Uh, let me know what you think about that down below, right? Another way is to put their souls at rest. Now, this is something that I feel like most people agree with while watching this show, is that like, all of the people that we're seeing, all these demons that are killing the actual people that are living inside Fromville, they used to be in Fromville themselves. Like, we get the clue that Victor was one of the original inhabitants of the town, and then when everybody was slaughtered and died, he was one of the few survivors. And then you see a bunch of demons that are dressed the same way those town folks were when Victor has that flashback sequence. So with that being the case, find out where all of these people were murdered at, 
and then bury their bones. Maybe that's why all of the people in Fromville haven't come back yet is because for the most part, they bury their dead. They put their dead in the ground so their spirits are at rest. So maybe all of these creatures from the 50s and 60s and Civil War days, right, they were never properly buried. So their bones are just sort of scattered in a field somewhere. Maybe that's one of the ways that you could kill or put to rest one of these demons is by finding out where they were killed at and then burying their bodies. Now, to be fair, I got that idea from all of the many, many years of watching horror movies and, and TV shows and such. But yeah, what do you all think about that? You think it's possible to maybe put their spirits to rest and that's one way to kill them? Okay, so just to summarize that last part, my big question, the first big question I had was, how do you kill one of these monsters? What are these monsters? It was sort of all combined into one. My ideas are daylight, shoving a talisman into them, uh, <laughs> perhaps blasting a hole through them and then shoving the talisman in after that. Um... My third option was they can only die when you bury their bones and put their spirits to rest. Um, so let me know what you all think, if there's a way to kill them, uh, down below in the comment section. And also, let me know if you uh, agree with the fact that the reason why they haven't even tried to capture or kill one of these creatures is because the town folks aren't military. And if a group of marines suddenly dropped into the town, they would probably try some military tactics on these demons. Let me know if you agree with that statement down below. Okay, so my next big question and this is not really a big question but i'm pretty sure everybody that saw the last episode was wondering right so remember when uh victor and tabitha are in the down under right we'll call it the down under uh, yeah you better watch out there's poisonous snakes down there uh, but remember they, they they're like looking through uh the caves and the caverns where the demons sleep at and you see they have possessions and remember victor says hey look they draw on the walls Right? So they still retain some of their human form and memories. That's how to easily answer that question, in my opinion. They're attached to certain things that belonged to them when they were humans. They can't help the fact that they need to feed, right? This isn't this is just as a side note. Why does it seemingly, in the first season at least, I haven't noticed it as much in the second season, why did they, they kept removing their hearts? Like, their hearts were taken out. They must be collecting hearts for some sort of ritualistic thing, or maybe they only eat the heart or something like that. I don't know. Let me know what you all think. But remember when they're down there, right before Victor gets freaked out by seeing that puppet, in my opinion, the reason why he freaks out from seeing the puppet is because that puppet uh, was likely involved in some sort of incident from when he was a kid, and he, Victor probably thought it was destroyed, right, but it wasn't, he sees it down there, he's like, that's not supposed to be here, he's like, I, I, I've gone the wrong way, and that's when he sort of has a breakdown, that doll is also seen in the community house, if I'm not mistaken, in the background, but I keep getting sidetracked from all these damn theories, so, when they're down there, when they're in the underground, they look over to the right, and they shine a flashlight on this thing that seemingly is a cave, it's like a, literally, like a cage inside of the cave that the demons are sleeping in. And then we see the one creature isn't asleep. It's actually awake, right? And it's sort of just crawling around, and it looks way more deformed than the other ones. So my, my point is here is that maybe these demons have pets. Is it possible? I don't know. That's a pet. They, the demons, remember, they're, we're told the entire series they like to torture you and make you fear and, like, make it last as long as possible. They're sick, right? They have a human. The only reason why I say it's a human is because it kind of looks like a human now that I've zoomed in on it and you can see that it's awake. While the demons are asleep, it's kind of like a warning system. It kicked a ball out to knock that big tower down to let the demons know, hey, there's humans down here. These demons have pet humans. Remember, Boyd runs into one who knows his wife somehow. So this one is one that sleeps with the demons and it's like their pet. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see it later in the series actually killing other humans. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. And that's just a demon who's like their pet other demon. I don't know. Let me know what you think down below. And that brings me to the last and final question that I want to bring up for this video. And I see it repeated a lot on Facebook in the From groups, right? People are saying, why haven't they started sharing all the info? <laughs> like, why are the other citizens in Fromville not talking with other citizens in Fromville about what the hell is happening? What's going on with them, right? Like, we had the interaction between Jim 
and uh, and Jade, right? And they ended up building a radio tower. They shared their information, right? Kind of. Jade's not really explaining what's happening in the hallucinations, although he sort of is, right? But did just like the town folks and Jared, like like Boyd needs to have a conversation with Jim and Jade and Victor, and they need to all be in the same room. And Tabitha should be there too because she's seeing the dead folks. And then also their son needs to be there to be like, hey, here's the little kid in white. And then you got to bring in Sarah, and then you have all these people. You have Jim, Jade, Donna. Kenny, all these individuals in the same room together and, and, and share your information and then you will get so much plot progression. There's the answer in and of itself. That's why they haven't done it yet. It's going to forward the plot. That's something that they'll likely save towards the end of season two. This is what they did in season one. They didn't bring Jim and Jade completely together until the last few episodes. They want this show to... Uh, be as good as possible. In my opinion, that's how they're making it as good as possible. They, they're not. People are saying they're stretching the plot. In my opinion, no, that's not the case. Uh, it does seem like that. It does seem like that because there are a lot of dramatic uh, scenes that are dealing with internal emotional conflict between two characters, and it doesn't necessarily progress the plot all the time. But that's what makes the show so good. I, I I can't explain it any further than like it's a slow burn, but not really because there's tons of action and the plot is giving you answers. You just have to search for them, right? It's not like a straightforward, hey, this is what's happening. This is, um, you know, not like a movie in that sense where a movie only has an hour and a half to tell a story. If I'm not mistaken, this show has already been greenlit for a third season. So that's amazing. Um, if you all agree with any of my thoughts or want to add on to any of my thoughts or just want to let me know your opinions, please do so down below. Typically on this channel, I cover a Song of Ice and Fire content. I have read the Game of Thrones book series eight fucking times. I've read all the other books in that world several times as well. I've read the Dune series, Lord of the Rings. I'm a big book guy, but I'm also a TV show nerd. Usually, um, I just don't cover that many TV shows because not really that many of them strike my interest. But this show, on the other hand, is amazing. I watched the entirety of the first season and two episodes of the second season in a in a 12-hour period, <laughs> like nonstop, and I have two children, so the fact that I was able to do that um, just shows you how good the show is, so yeah, I'm going to continue to cover it if you all like these. The last video that I made on this did pretty well. It's got more views than any other video that I've put out in weeks, so that's amazing. That'll definitely be motivation to make me want to continue to make more videos on this, but again, like I said, I don't really make shows on videos just to try to get views. I make um, videos on shows that I enjoy. So, the only reason why I'm making content on this show is because I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, also, I've noticed that there was a person who posted on the Facebook from group that they were able to get an interview with someone from the cast. If anybody watching this knows uh, any way to do that or how that would be possible, please let me know. Um, that would be amazing. Uh, please subscribe and please leave me your thoughts down below and slap a like on this video.